Um, we're gonna dive into how to get lined up. We got a few different types of bowlers. I got more crankers for you today, so no we can show you know, the people how that translates to your coaching. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna help us much like you just did me with figuring out how to get lined up properly. Um, a lot of times when you're bowling, whether it be a league or a tournament, um, you're your worst enemy if you're not lined up properly from the beginning anyway, because now you're adjusting from a wrong spot already. So how do we yeah, go and start off, off on the right foot? With well, always making sure we're lining up properly. You, you, you got to look at this two ways. Very important. Being lined up the first game is not as important as everybody thinks. Because what happens in typical league scores, high game is the first game, not so good the second game, the worst game is the third game because they're not lined up. So what happened was they spent so much time getting lined up the first game, we invariably bowl from our favorite place on the lane. If you start on your favorite place and the lanes break down, that means your moves are going to be negative because now you're leaving your favorite place. It's like going out to dinner with your wife and she wants to go to her favorite place and you don't, invariably the service is bad and the food sucks and then she gives you the look all the way to drive home. Love you, Shannon. All right, so I always want people to, to line up way too far right if you're right-handed, way too far left if you're left-handed from your favorite place. Why? Bowling isn't about guessing. Bowling's about making decisions. All I did was line you up too far right mm -hmm. and see your ball hook too much. Then when we moved, it wasn't a guess, it was a decision. Yeah. If you line up from your favorite place and it doesn't work, it's a guess. well now you're, for one, you're pissed. How come you couldn't oil the lanes the same? <laughs> Remember this, there's one lane machine here. It's one lane I tend to oil every day. I'm in charge of mixing the cleaner. I'm in charge of putting the oil in. I oil it when I want and I pick the pattern. The lanes are different every day on the one lane I do and I'm using that machine. Why? Weather. People that bowl first. If the first lesson's a two-hander, I have to oil them two or three times. If the first lesson has a lower rev rate, I only oil them once because the lanes get easier and easier. Lanes are different every day. So when you line up, you always want to line up too far right or left to where you like to play. That way you're moving towards your favorite place. Then maybe the second game or third game you want to be so far left. That's what I see people line up too far left because their first shot hooks, but they're throwing it half speed. It's supposed to hook. You want your first shot to get three and left. Dry is your friend. If the lanes are hooking, you can move left. You can change balls. You can throw it harder. You can add rotation. You can throw it up in the air. There's like five or six easy things to do if the lanes hook too much. But if you walk into bowl and you're bowling from your favorite place and the ball doesn't hook, and you move right and the ball goes even straighter, panic sets in. What are you throwing? Well, I'm throwing my new harsh reality and I got it down to 500. And I got, I got my own ball spinner at home. I'm dialed in and you just keep it in the three pin in the face. Mm -hmm. That's the only condition that puts the fear of God in pros. Okay. When their ball doesn't hook. So seeing your ball hook is actually a good thing. Then you have moves that are decisions that will help you line up better. Well, we're about to put that to the test. I got Earl the Pearl, Tone of course. We got Blake here, who's also a cranker, and we got my boy Brian, who's another, see it. another cranker. So we're going to see how you get us lined up on these two different pairs. The pairs are actually different, guys. So and at the training center, my lane came from the Gold Coast, and this lane came from the Ellen DeGeneres show, of all places. So anyways, that's just, she did a show, and they got one to get rid of the lane. My man Lee Haxton went and got it, and we got a lane. So Pro Ambo lane, Gold Coast lane, this lane's much older than this. This lane tends to hook more, that the, the ball hooks back. This lane has way more out of bounds, but the back ends are tighter. So even though I got two lanes here, they play a lot different. So when you bowl league, you should expect that. Never expect to play both lanes the same. Always try to look for a little bit of difference. Why? That way you can't be mad if they're not the same. You don't know who bowled on that lane before you. Maybe somebody bowled in that lane you didn't know. Maybe the mechanic oiled the lane, came out, oiled him. He left, wait a minute, listen. Somebody called for a ball return. He went in the back, fixed the ball return. He comes back to lane two and guess what he thinks? I don't remember if I did this lane or not. Well, I guess what? I'm going to do it again. So he does it twice. They have that way the people have oil and he goes over and does the other lane. So guess what? One lane has twice much oil as the other one. Or he thought he oiled it and he didn't. The mechanics get called for all kinds of crazy reasons. So you should expect the lanes to always be different. That way when they're the same, you're going to be in a better mood and have higher scores. So we can all hear it. One, two, three, slide. Because right now, three's not, a, three's not happening. It's not a three. Yeah, it says, one, three. We're not doing that. I want to hear like this. One, two, three, there. See, it should look like that without a ball in your hand. Look like a million bucks. One, two, three. Hey, look at that. So now you can move back to the right. Yeah, but you didn't fall off and you actually had a fall through. Watch. You didn't cut it, you didn't. 
Your follow through actually got to look at your balance. Do it again. So you went light and moved left with that ball. You shouldn't have moved left. Yeah, no. More right. And I'm switching balls, so. There you go. Still count them out loud. All right. One, two, three. Hey, balance again. Yeah. Now you can go back to the ball that was stronger. Exactly. Yep. And stay left. Because what happened? That's the first two shots you've thrown that's gone through the tape. Yep. Because your balance is better. Yep. yep. When you take away your pivot step, your shoulder becomes a power source. You can't, then you're throwing your head at release forward. You can't, you can't be imbalanced. So I'm going to go just the fourth. No, it's quick on the fourth. Watch. Good, excellent. See, it's kind of a, yeah, you're bowling two-handed. You have two-handed footwork with bowling one hand. That's the problem. Like, I've always had that, and the timing is really tough to figure out. Because So do it without a ball in your hand and make yourself stop on the fourth step. I got your arm. Go. One, two, three, four. That's where you need to get. See, that's actually a step. Okay. So you get it where it goes up on its toe. Mm -hmm. So when it's on its toe, you get off your toe. So if I get off my toe, this is no longer involved. The only power source I have is this. And your balance is off. It has to be. You got to have a power source. It's either your shoulder or your throwing arm leg. One or the other. There's no, there's nothing else that can give you power. Okay. And to have consistency, it has to be your leg. Three. That was your best pivot step so far. We and it's. Action. It's a, well, then slow your feet down. You actually had a step. It's not so much that it's slow, it's that it's not too fast. Okay. So what you did was you made your swing faster than your feet. So that made this 50 and this and that 50. Was, yeah. That was actually 70, 30. So that's what we're talking about. Now watch. I can feel it. And it feels like a rhythm too. That looks right. way so you look at your balance though. You didn't, your head didn't go anywhere, right? The first, what I noticed when I watched the pros is how much more methodical, exact, disciplined their first two steps are than everybody else in the world. Mm. If you watch their first two steps, it's, it's, it's not mechanical, that's a bad word, but it's very disciplined. It's almost exactly the same, because we all see how, how much that's the same. Yep. It's because this is the same. They start, none of them start fast. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe Jacob. Control. Jacob has, a, Jacob's pretty quick in the we beginning of his approach. To the line, but he's Jacob has a unique approach, right. Well, other than that, I mean, if you look at Belmonte or all those guys, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, you know, they're real. Bill O'Neill, Kyle, Tro Kyle Troop is exact how he starts. Mm -hmm. That allows him to be consistent at the, other, at the end of the approach. Okay. So when I make you count, it's just not that you're slowing down. I'm just putting you in balance. I'm making you count your steps so you, then your feet are underneath you all I'm the time. I'm glad I know that now because that's something I can do. You can do that get, a, get yourself out of whack, right? Exactly. Okay. That's and all bowling is, is feel. So it feels good, I'm going to bowl good. You walk into Bowl League, you got cut. We live in the San Fernando Valley, Orange County. Get there at 6.30 to bowl, and guess what? It's 45 minutes late. You get there, you get norm up. Now you're pissed off. You're on the pair at the guy you can't stand in league anyways. He's looking at his watch. He don't want to wait to let you bowl your third frame. Yeah, yeah, so now yeah. you're hot. <laughs> so now you got to bowl your first frame and your, and your swing's fast, your feet are slow. Yeah. How are you going to get yourself back in time? Mm -hmm. How are you going to get yourself back in balance? Bowling isn't about who throws it the best. The best bowlers can fix themselves in one game. They know what creates their feel. So if the, you using the counting trick gives you back your feel. Exactly. Because your feel is unique to you. Nobody else ever coached bowls like you. Mm -hmm. Nobody bowls like anybody else. So your feel is unique. Yeah. That's why tips from other bowlers tend not to help. You know what they're telling you? This is how I create my feel. So you should do what I do so you can bowl like me. But then he's, you know, 68 years old and he's a little short guy and he weighs 240 pounds. Not helping you, you much. The ball in his life. Well, I'm not going there, but there, there is that commonality. So they're just telling you how they, you, they create their feel. It's not a wrong tip, it's their tip. So that's why tips very rarely work with Monks League bowlers mm -hmm. because they're telling you what makes their feel happen. And that's why we need you. Ah, well. That's why we need you because we can't be listening to all these other bowlers. They mean well, they, they do mean well and they have their, their hearts in the right place. Now, if your feel happens to be close to their feel, wow, that really worked. I'm throwing a ball much better because your feels were close. That's all it is. I'm going to come in, somebody that wants to play, you know, eventually, obviously, I want to get to the 30. I want to be able to swing right. the lane. So I'd start 10 thing. too far right. 10 too far right. So we're going to go to the 20. And somewhere. look about five too far right. So look about 10. Gotcha. Felt pretty good. I haven't thrown from the 20 like that in a while. <laughs> Every day is different. It's one of the best shots I've had in three weeks. 
Look how good your balance was. Yeah. And the ball went, the ball went where you were wanted down lane. So that's telling you, wow, maybe there be so again, you stood on 20 and you looked at 10. So your number would be five. You drifted five. And you hit 13. So five and three left. Perfect. Right. Let's go. All right. So here we are with Blake. Before we start, for those of you watching on YouTube, he looks very much like a pro. I don't want to get the guy's name wrong. It is Mikey Slovak. Mikey Slovak. I watched him uh, bowl the practice session on the short pattern in Detroit. He ended up making the show. So, Mike, you made one show and you've already got the guy that bowls like you. Might be the most successful pro in the world. Congratulations. Let's watch him throw it. His tendency is to pull it down and miss right because he pulls it down with his shoulder. Go ahead and jack on one, Mr. Wright. So what happens is when people have a hard time keeping their left foot quiet, I mean, when they stay in balance, you pull down so hard, the downforce of your shoulders, that's what spins your hips. So most of your misses go to the right and you have a rotator, right? So what we're trying to do is get his left foot to be a little more quiet so the power comes out of his legs so he can add the rotation later. So he, what happens is when you pull down and that foot spins out, now your hips are facing the wall, but your brain wants the ball to go that way. Well, the only thing that can happen is your hand can come over the top. So he adds the rotation too soon. He throws like this. So the ball's coming off like that. It shoots it dead right. Either hits the out of bounds, doesn't hook, hits a drive too early and goes Brooklyn. His good shot, when he uses more legs and his hand goes forward and adds a rotation later, his left foot will stay straighter, more balanced, and he'll hit his target more often. Trying to add that rotation a little later, get that left foot to be a little calmer. We can't even make that stuff up. That's so good. He's been having a problem with his foot being parallel to this line and his ball coming off going way to the right. So now watch how he uses his hands better. So now his left foot is super solid. And look at the line of the ball, right to the tape. He's still on his left leg with his arm swinging as the ball goes through the pins, what every bowler wants. All it was was taking the power out of his shoulder and calming down his left foot. That made his hand not over rotate. When he was pulling it down with his hand and his left foot was moving, his hand had to get it back over the top because his hips weren't facing where he wanted the ball to go. Very good. It honestly changed my game. Or from what I see, I can already tell that like I can improve my accuracy and I'm not gonna have that many misses and I'm gonna leave more makeable spares and my arms probably go up like 10, 15 pins from now. It was just explaining it a little different way. He's been trying to fix it with his hand. So he's pulling it down with his shoulder to feel his hand, but that was making his left foot inconsistent. So his angles through the front part of the lane were different every time. So then it makes the decision what to, how to play the lane. Very, very tricky. So he can calm down his shoulder, get his left foot to be a little more stable. He'll start seeing the accuracy. Then he can make decisions of which ball to throw and where to move on the lane. Yep. So he's standing on 21, 22. Where are you looking? I'm looking at 13. Very good. So he hit the left edge of the Baker box, probably set around 25. So you guys have been bowling a while, so you've made them all kind of the same. There you go. His left foot got solid again. I had too much force and I came off balance. A little bit, but, but you didn't have the rotation early, so the ball still went forward. Another easy way to line up is all Blake did was watch Rich bowl. Every one of Rich's good shots, he was they're both one-handed, fairly high rev rate. Rich is sliding on 25, hitting 12-13. He just did his math. He drifts about three left. This is about one or two left. He's signed up 21, look 12. Next thing you know, he's signed on 25, hitting 15. He's playing already where he's seen somebody else have success. So if the rev rates are close and you're both the same amount of arms, it's, sometimes it's easier to line up off somebody else. You just have to know your drift and miss numbers so you can slide where they slide and you hit where they hit and it works. Basically what I did the entire 80s. I either lined up off Marshall Holman or Mark Roth. I was never good as one of them, but I made a lot of finals. And I used to make Marshall mad, so that made me happy. Like a different bowler, dude. It's so much better. So much better. Now you're hitting everything in front of you, so now your rev rate's effective because it's accurate. Yeah. You have a five, you have 530, 520, 540. You have that kind of rev rate, and you can actually hit a target, bowling becomes fun. Oh, yeah. Never met Brian, but the first thing I see when I see Brian is everybody's telling him to slow down. Not throw it so hard, but there's one slight problem. Brian's my size. I won't say what he weighs, 
but it's north of 250. <laughs> have you had lunch today? I haven't. Oh, I have, so I'm 275. All right. I, didn't, I don't get cheated to get this far. All right. So also, he's not exactly skinny here. So he's not going to get any smaller. His arms aren't going to get any littler. So when a guy this big throws it this hard, he shouldn't play the lanes too far left. He should actually be right of everybody. Because when you want one, when you're nervous, when you're bowling your best, when you're our size, it's always easier to throw it harder than slower because we're big and we're strong. So we like to throw it Mach 1, as I put it. So he should line up farther right than everybody. Let's see how he does. That last ball mark, 577. So a big guy like that, he throws a lot of shoulder in it. We just got to keep his shoulder up. Do it again. There we go. So now you're sliding on 15, hitting 10. So move your feet two left and your eyes one right. Slid on 15 and he hit 10. The math doesn't add up. The ball cannot go to the baker box. That's too far right or too far left. So we're gonna move his feet a little left so he can slide in this zone, hit the same target, and his ball have more shape. So when you got a guy that throws at 21 miles an hour with a 550 rev rate, you just let him do that. Nope, head went down, hand came over. So if he gets down too far, that ball really got on the inside of your hand. So you got to keep your head up more. That was smoother. Now watch what happens at the end. He'll be in balance. Right here. His head did move on his left leg. Hit 11, went through the baker box. If you throw enough shots there, your odds are pretty good. You'll start striking. You just want to, bowling, People misconstrue this all the time. They leave one ring in 10. They want to change everything. I disagree with that completely. What you want to do is give yourself the most chances. Remember this, nine spare is a good frame. Nobody ever lost a doubles partner because they can make a spare and get nine a lot. So what happens? People get in trouble when they get six and, and try to get rid of that ring in 10. That's the first shot to the pocket in three. One ring in 10. Oh, you got to do this different, this different, than this different. Remember this, you leave one ring in 10, the earth will not spin off its axis. It's not a big deal, just pick it up. Now, if he were to do that three or four more times in a row, we would make an adjustment. But one time, he just needs to give himself more chances and leave more tens. Because as you become a better bowler, all you leave is more 10 pins. You don't leave less, you leave more because you hit the pocket more. Make the 10 pin your friend, bowling will get more fun. Hey, hey. Much better, much better. Now you're in balance. If we could just take away missing left, how much better would you bowl? There are two misses in bowling. You can miss left or you can miss right. My job as a coach is to eliminate one or the other. Now, if I give a lesson, here's how I tend to do it. If you miss right, all I'll ever say is hit the reset and do it again. Now, if you miss left, I correct everything, being a right-hander. I don't like misses that are left. So when he misses a little bit right, doesn't bother me at all because it has redeeming value. He almost hit his target. His hand didn't come over the top. His balance was good. He just missed a little bit right. So always try to find one way to miss or the other. You don't want to have both misses. Teach yourself to just have one side of the fairway you miss on, preferably the right. That is how I can find my own feeling. Here, without a ball. So you get it. You get it so far here that you don't have time to get it here. So you're here. Got it. Bring this back. It's like going. There. This only moves your hand three inches. Your elbow moves your elbow. You're getting it out here. Then have time to get back. Got it. I just need your elbow to move your hand three to four inches forward. Now swing it back and now tilt. Now tilt. Now move your left foot in front. That's where you need to get. Okay. Try that. Okay. So let's get that stance a little more neutral. Nope, no, just your hands. So now we're just gonna have your elbow move your hand forward three, four inches. Okay, gotcha. So that way it swings back better. You've been pushing it too far out and too far up. It's just, you're just trying to get to, like starting a kid in a swing set. You're just moving it so it'll swing back. We gotta get your swing longer in the back. A little better, a little better, a little better. Yeah, See, without a ball, let's do the whole approach. Without a ball, do the whole approach. I got your arms, whenever you're ready. 
to there. I got it. I got it. We got it. All right. Yeah. Now you grab my hands. Got it. All right. I'm not. No, I'm not two-handed. Yeah. So here's what. Here's what Tone's doing. He's here. He's here. He's ripping it back. So it's getting back too soon. Now walk with me if I'm imitating, say, Jason Belmonte. Gotcha. It's a swing. Watch this. My I arms see. barely go back. Your body's coming forward. My body's going off. forward. My arms are just floating. Gotcha. You're pulling it. What happens is, whether you're one-handed or two-handed, when you create a backswing by pulling it, your body can't go forward. It's 15 pounds. Yeah. If you pull 15 pounds of sand behind you, you can't walk. If you walk and that sand swings with you, you can walk by it. Yeah. So we got to soften your hands going back. Go ahead. Smooth. Now you're ahead of it. That's it. I see. It. This okay. has to go back softer so it can come down faster. Got it. If it goes back fast, it gets, gets here and stops. Yeah. That's why you drop the ball. Yeah. That's All right. why my shoulders are always so sore when I'm. Correct, because you're not using your legs enough. Your swing is short. Not bad. So now it's hooking again. Now you move your. So you're getting it close to where you want it to. I'd probably move my feet three or four left. Your eyes one or two left to try to get to that tape again. So if you move left, your right foot should come back a little bit. Your right foot. And open up. There you go. Now your chest is facing the tape. You can still walk away from it. Yep. Smooth swing. Hey, 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 there we go. I don't charge enough. That was a little bit down, but see, all of a sudden you're hitting the target better. Yeah. Right. Look at your balance. You're on your left leg when the ball hit the pins. If two enders have accuracy and balance, they always bowl good. Look how good your balance is. That's more of a swing. It still got back. That's why one-handers don't like two-handers. 13-ish area down to the Baker box, I want to say around that 7, 8. That's where they're playing. Perfect. I so like your first shot should be somewhere around there because you've seen it. Yeah. Let's see what your balls does to theirs and you make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. So you slid on 25 and you hit 15. That ball stayed online for a long time. It only went high at the last second and you missed in. That tells you your move left isn't that big. Yeah. If you'd have made that same shot, and that ball barely hit the head pin, then you'd have moved quite a bit more. Yeah. So now I'd only move my feet about two or three left and my eyes one to try to get a little more right down lane. Okay. First try. So if, so when you have less speed than everybody else, you have to create more angle. Yeah. So move two boards left, one board out. I'm not coming to lead with you. Come on! Oh my God! So you said, look what you said. But look what you said. I'm gonna play around 15. I'm gonna hit around seven board. Yeah. Because you watched what they did and you applied it to your game, you threw one shot. You got information. You made a decision. That's why you were lined up so yeah. fast. All right. You're always gonna be slightly left of the guys because your speed's slower. Yeah. But you have a high rev rate and you have a good roll. We got action. We got action. Who says we're not accurate? Two finger bowlers got this. I always this. like when they make me look smart. I have nothing to do with it. 